morning, guys. What are we gonna do today? Well, whatever we're gonna do, I hope we do it quick because it's already 78 degrees here in the studio and it's not even eight o'clock in the morning. Today, we're gonna look at Stein Grabber Performance Knives. These are some of the best little fixed blades I've ever handled. Took me so long to get around to doing them because, well, if I do the review, they have to go home. Guys, quick word about sponsorship. I am the sponsor. There's a bunch of affiliate links. So if you're looking for knives and gear and stuff, check out the affiliate links down below. Everything you purchase through those affiliate links supports the channel directly. Guys, let's take a look at these knives from above. But first, turn down the volume because here comes a little bit of that music. Imagine you can hear the noise outside. There's not much I can do about it. I can't just not film. I've got to get this done. It's already like 80 degrees in this garage. <clears throat> they they said they're gonna try and hurry up, but they they're they're working on it quick. So we're looking at these Stein Grabber performance knives. I have two versions. I have the Sasquatch and I have the Shark. And as far as I know right now, those are the two models that Alex makes. Um, these are both incredible, incredible little fixed blade knives. You guys know I love fixed blades. These are some of the best. And for a guy that makes fixed blades and has a small everyday carry fixed blade that I designed, to tell you that honestly, these knives are better is you have to you have to swallow your pride a little bit and just be honest and say both of these knives for what they are i mean they're way different than my knife but i think they accomplish their tasks better than mine so we have the shark and the sasquatch we're going to get into it i want to do the sasquatch first because it is my favorite of the two so let's go ahead and get that shark out of the way this is that sasquatch now, there's a lot to be said for this knife. Alex's ergos on this knife are incredible. It is a small, I, you guys know I like to say that I'm a fan of a, of a closer to one to one blade to handle ratio, but there's a lot to be said for having a large handle and a small blade. And a lot of that comes from the control that you get. This is an outdoors knife. Now this reminds me a lot of a knife that I still own that was a gift from my father. It was called the, uh, the Schrade Littlefinger. And I'll put a picture of it up over here but it, it was a knife that my dad got for me, my first hunting knife, my first fixed blade knife. And um, it was a lot like this. Um, larger handle that, that was fat down here at the end, skinny up here, and a shorter blade that gave you a lot of control. And it was for outdoors for hunting, just like this would fit perfect in that role. Um, there's a lot of control that comes from having that. And the nice thing is this handle is big enough for a guy like me, even with really big hands, that I can get really good control of this knife because it has a large handle and I'm not losing anything. But if you have smaller hands, you're also not giving up anything. It doesn't feel bulky or oversized. The blade shape on it is just about perfect for a lot of outdoor stuff grind on it is nice and thin now this is the, this is marked as cpm 440 v it's actually s 60 v now this blade i have had this knife here at my house for a while and you can see i finally got some dull on it i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to clean that up before i send it back to uh, murky ocean um but the s 60 v on this has held up really really well um, I talked to Alex. He said he ran this about 63 HRC. I love the fact that he left that kind of a raw grind on it. Um, I like that finish. I like that raw grinder finish on a knife that you know has been handmade. It, it looks really good on that and it gives it some really, you know, it, it's, you can tell it was handmade. It was not done on a machine. Uh, per se. I mean, I know that there's a lot of the machining that gets done. Handles on this are in rich light. Now, you know, I love rich light. You know, I had to get uh, PDM out here for a second. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, it's in rich light. Now, rich light is uh, a material that is really common in a lot of different industries. It's a composite that's made with paper. This is their chocolate uh, rich light, and it looks like hardwood. It feels incredible in hand. Um, and it is a little bit grippy 
if you get it wet, you can see it kind of absorbs like a lot of those composites and you get a little bit more grip. That natural fiber will start to expand. Sorry, I got some, sorry, murky. I, I spit on your knife. Um, but it has a really nice feel in hand. All the champers and everything on this are done really well. And it's just a very, very good outdoor knife. Like I said, I've done, a, this has been here for several months now. And I have done a lot of cutting with this and it holds up pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't had to sharpen it. I, like I said, I will because I've got to send it back off to Murky and, uh, and I've, I've gotten some little hiccups on that tip of that blade. So this thing is a great, great overall outdoor knife. <clears throat> next, next thing on it, the sheath that came with it, this Steingrabber Performance Knives, Alex did a really good, these sheaths are good. I like this a lot. It's got a pocket clip. You could use it as a belt clip if you wanted to. It's a nice solid sheath. There's that freaking noise again. I'm not even gonna try and edit it out. Um, it is my refrigerator filling on the ice cycle. I did figure it out. But this is a beautifully rough outdoors. This is something I like. It is not trying to be something it isn't. This is not something that's supposed to be fancy. This is something that's supposed to be used. And the sheath lets you know that coarse sheath. It's just it's beautiful. I like things that are beautifully unsophisticated, a lot like me. So there you go. There's that Stein Grabber um, Sasquatch. So let's go ahead and bring the shark up and look at it as well. So guys, this is the Steingrabber Performance Knives Shark, which is a lot different than the Sasquatch, but also reminds me of the knife that my father had, which was the, the cousin to this, which I, I kind of dig it. This has a edge profile, a lot like other outdoor hunting knives, like the Sharp Finger, which was the knife that my dad had. This one is done in CPM crewwear. Now, I had to ask Alex because this crewwear has held up better than any crewwear I've ever used. And there's a couple reasons for it. It is, this thing is super thin. Guys, this thing is super thin behind the edge for a fixed blade knife. It is, well, let's go ahead and get the calipers and take a look at it. So Alex is known for talking about the thing that I always talk about too, which is not just the edge geometry, but the behind the edge and blade geometry. So right behind the edge on this, 0 0.020. So actually, point, well, I think I slid up a little bit, but let's get right at the edge. Yeah, about 0 0.020, right there behind the edge. Measure it one more time just to make sure I'm not telling stories out of school. Yeah, 0 0.19, 0 0.019, 0 0.020-ish. So to give you a perspective on that, the feeler gauge that I use, that is a 0 0.020. So that is your blade stock thickness behind the edge. That is not very thick at all. And just so you guys can see, 0 0.020, that is a 50 cal headspace and timing gauge. Uh, that was given to me by a chief that I worked for. So you're not looking at much material behind the edge. And what that allows that to do is even when this knife gets dull, it still cuts. Uh, but the thing is, I told Alex, he ran this CPM crew wear. I think he said 65, 66, which is pretty hard. And I have yet to have this get dull. So this is the edge it came with when Murky Ocean sent it to me. And it's it is nutballs sharp still. And I told Alex, I was like, the only thing I've had that held an edge through as much cardboard as well is the knives that I've made in S125V. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. S125V is just a, a, a monster. And to have CPM crew wear, which I've used before, and I know it gets dull and needs sharpened from time to time, hold up to as much cutting as I did on this is pretty impressive. Um, also, like I said, I love the grind work. I love that it's a raw grind with a little bit of a stone wash on it. But this is the cool part. These are the handles. This is Tough Light. Um, I'm sorry, not Tough Light, Terra Tough. This is Terra Tough, which I've talked to the people that make it at knife shows before. And it's a really unique handle material on this because it gives you some of the qualities of Kydex. But it also has a different, or not Kydex, geez, might get your head straight. Um, uh, micarta. Jeez. 
It's the, it's the long COVID, guys. It's long COVID. It's messing up my brain. Um, it has a lot of feel like my Carta, but then again, it doesn't. It feels different. You get the same grippiness, but you get a different feel. It has a different look. It's a little bit more polished, but it's still grippy. I don't know how to describe it. It, it feels like when you're holding it, it feels like it would be soft. It feels like you'd be able to stick your thumbnail down into it and dig into it like a piece of rubber or something like that, but you can't. So it's a composite material that is, I mean, it is a really good material. This is one of the few knives I've ever gotten to handle that was in it. In hand, beautiful. It addresses the cut perfectly. Push cut, draw cut, however you're going to use it. This knife cuts so, so well. And even though I like this one better, I think this one is the better cutter. And when we talk about, geez, I keep bumping the tripod. It's not a good day for filming, guys. I just, I just have not had a good day of it so far. Um, it's, it is probably one of the best cutters that has come in in a very, very long time. And I really like it. And I'm really glad that I got a chance to see him because I like Alex. I'm in a chat group with Alex and I really like the work he's doing and to have gotten them in and realized I liked them so much that I held on to them this long so that I could keep cutting with them says a lot because I've got so much other stuff here I should be doing. Um, the only thing I would say that I would like to see maybe a little bit more of a chamfer here. And I mean, that's just 100% an aesthetic thing. That is absolutely aesthetics. It has nothing to do with the way it feels in hand or anything like that. Just maybe knock a little bit off that, kind of like this. It just gives it it just gives it a, a cleaner look. But as far as functionality, you can't go wrong with it. Um, so there you go, man. Guys, there was two um Strand Grabber performance knives, and I'm glad I got to see them. The fact that this is just so crazy, insane sharp still after all the stuff I've done with it is pretty amazing. So guys, let's turn this around and do some final thoughts and send you out about your day. There you go, guys. I personally love this little, this little uh, Sasquatch in, uh, in 440. It's actually S60V. Um, I talked with uh, Alex about that. It's marked CPM S, it's CPM 440V, but it's actually S60V. So, and it's in rich light. Can you believe that? It's in rich light. I didn't grab my hat, but so guys, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like the videos, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change that content if you don't tell me what it is you don't like. If you wanna support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure that you have notifications turned on on your device or you're not gonna get notified of all the stuff I put up. Uh, if you wanna support the channel financially, I mentioned at the beginning, like I said, tons of affiliate links down below. Gear, knives, uh, sharpening stones, tools, all kinds of stuff. But Mainly the big one, I have a Blade HQ affiliate link down there and Coffee Brand Coffee. Don't forget about that. That's a good, it's a good company. Um, anything you purchase through the Amazon affiliate links, even if it's not the item you clicked on, still supports the channel. But yeah, guys, support the channel that way. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below that is tier based. Uh, pick the tier that suits you best, but just remember everyone saves $5 off my sharpening service. Everyone has access to my Gilded server. And if you're a premium tier member, you have access to a sh premium sharpening tutorial series. And then the final way is I have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. And I've set up a coupon code that will save you 10% anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. And that coupon code is Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. And if you send me pictures of you wearing my merchandise, I will put them in a video. Guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section if it's your birthday. Happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.